Hi everyone, today is Tuesday, October 9, and um, I'm not sure what I'm going to call this video yet, but for some reason um, there's something within me that says that uh, we have to actually also uh, take some time to acknowledge um, a person who has since uh, very strangely transitioned as an ancestor now. Uh, his name is um, Charlie Roach, and uh, Charles Roach, sorry. Um, I don't know who this person is, but um, I learned a lot about his work actually at a hearing that I was in today with um, something in Canada called the Law Society of Upper Canada. And, uh, you know, I was really moved by um, what this Harry... Uh, Capito had to say about this person by the name of uh, Charlie Roach. And in some of my videos, I've been trying to come to understand where does this thing called the pathology or the pathological of whiteness come from? I had some questions about uh, Steve Biko. They said that, uh, for example, he um, hung himself. Steve Biko didn't hang himself. There's a person by the name of Charles Roach. I'm going to do some more reading into who this person was. He was a human rights counsel lawyer um, in Canada in the urban demographic of Ontario, Toronto. And uh, he represented human rights. And I learned today that he had this really beautiful poetry about him and this fire like an ox and this fire that was just so <sighs> as dangerous as the sun and actually today he was supposed to testify um, for this person by the name of Harry Capoto uh, K-O-P-Y-T-O Copito. And um, mysteriously, he died, is what they say. He said he died of brain cancer. But you know what? This man seemed to be a healthy man. So how is it that he all of a sudden becomes the status of deceased? Just before he's called to testify to defend this person by the name of Harry uh, Copito. I was in this hearing, I thought to myself, you know what, these people that represent the fucking Law Society of Upper Canada, what the fuck is Upper Canada? I fucking looked around, where are the uh, Aboriginal judges, where the fuck are they? Look at around, no pictures. You know, when you see things like that, that's called the supremacy of pathological whiteness. If we are actually working to it together towards equality, where the fuck are the Aboriginal judges? Where are they? I was just so fucking disgusted when I sat in this hearing, and this is supposed to be a professional standards hearing. I said, "What the fuck? What what the fuck do they want with this guy?" You know what? He represents he represents the poor, people who can't fucking afford to pay fees. One guy, he's got a patent that's worth off oh, how many millions of dollars? And that patent was actually plagiarized, being traded on the stock market. The guy doesn't even have $25 to feed himself. What the fuck is this? This is a particular demographic in Ontario. Canada, rather. One province by the name of Ontario. So I'm in this hearing, and I would just want to read this beautiful letter. What the... Um, situation is, is that there's a legal counsel who is up for um, some kind of hearing related to some kind of conduct. And what the law society has a problem with is this person's character. But, you know, this shit should actually be televised, and there should be an international discussion on this. Why do systems like this work like this? These are people's lives that you're fucking around with. So this man was speaking to where he got 
his skills and his learning from, and it was actually from a black man. And he was talking about this Charles Roach person. I still have to do more looking into, you know, um, about him. So what he was trying to do was he was trying to resurrect something about this person to say, okay, you know what, people, this is where I got my training from, so have some fucking respect. And I sat there and I looked around and I saw a Caucasian woman. I started taking notes. And this fucking Caucasian woman's looking at me, so I look her in her fucking eyes. And you know what? She starts taking notes and her eyes are, really? Then the one next to her, I don't know who the fuck she is. You know? Someone just got fucking life mysteriously ended. Like, you know what? They need to bring capital punishment back to Canada. But you know what? You don't have to bring in the system of death here. Because you know what? Living could be just death. What you have to do is you have to actually align with different trade regions. Middle East has a great system. Ship those motherfuckers to the Middle East. There's a system in the United States. But what about the wrongfully accused? This is a very good petitioner, this Harry uh, Copito. They should nominate him as a judge. Get him to clean up the whole system. And let him formulate his own fucking team. I was so moved by this. I said, what the fuck is this? So somebody is supposed to testify to his character. This person is an international human rights defender. Even represented people who were impacted in Rwanda. And he dies. They said he died of brain cancer. Hello, cancer's an economy. These people are so fucked up, it's not even funny. So, let me just read you this beautiful piece that was written by uh, Charles Roach. And it was for uh, Harry Capoto. Co uh, Copito, sorry. As a person central to the negotiation and preparation of the agreed statement of facts upon which the benchers of the Law Society saw fit to disbar Harry, I have to shake my head in disgust. Before my very eyes, I saw how Harry was set up. I did not for a moment think that any of those horrible benchers would subvert the negotiated plea to negligence and find that Harry committed a fraud on legal aid. It should be made known that the legal aid investigators in their report stated that the facts as they found them did not support a charge of fraud. At no time during the proceedings was fraud ever alleged by the Law Society. At no time did the prosecutors for the Law Society allege recklessness on Harry's part. The agreed statement did not concede fraud of recklessness, yet the benchers found there was recklessness amounting to fraud. I am numbered by the fact that such a miscarriage of justice could happen in the inner sanctum of Ontario lawyers. Had there been a developed code of professional conduct in the criminal law, one could not be. There has to be decency involved in plea bargaining. One has to have trust that the adjudicators will be sensitive to the process and the delicate balance is worked out by prosecutor and respondent to save the system time and expense. The bencher subverted that principle in this case. Long after we are gone from the face of this earth, future generations will examine the Copito case and find it a shabby episode in the history of the law society. But the truth of the matter will be out one day. We hope the courts can erase this nasty blot on the record of law society discipline procedures. This is from the now deceased Charles Roach. What the fuck really happened to Charles Roach? Were there people there actually watching what they were doing to him? What about his medical records? How did he consent to that shit? Do they have a signature on those records? And not only a signature, have some commentary on there. Died of cancer? Hello, people, there's a cure for cancer. He was supposed to testify for this uh, Harry, Harry Capito, sorry. What the fuck happened, people? This is a really beautiful piece. 
that this Harry Capito was presenting to this very disgusting panel. They had white, male, one that I saw, a lot of white females, boy, and they looked real nasty. I was looking at one and I was like, hmm. All of a sudden, I'm there taking notes and she starts taking notes and her eyes are going, who the fuck are you, bitch? You know these people? They don't have a fucking spirit. But you know what? We have a spirit. You're playing with people's fucking human lives here. And it's like a joke to them. There's one Punjabi sitting there with a blue thing on his head. He's looking at me. I'm looking right the fuck at him. He's supposed to be reading a piece of paper. So what is the professional conduct here? Who the fuck are these people? How do you actually measure the supremacy of whiteness? and his tokenism. Let me read you this beautiful piece. Bravo, Copito. Copito chose a risky course, not so much with calculation as with a straight arrow reflex. From 20 years of doing battle with entrenched repressive systems, the judge held no, but the people cried bravo. His risk was critical, com his risk was critical commentary of state-sanctioned crime of cover-ups and beating down of those who sought redress in a land where, n where high courts rule. Truth is no defense. The judges held no, but the people cried bravo. Was it the, was it the form, the form, or the substance of his words that flayed an exposed nerve, making the Queen's almighty agents reach backwards into eons for a dis, uh, disused, archaic charge. To rack and pinion him, the judges held no. But the people cried bravo. Though many were with him, yet he was alone to lay down his livelihood for freedom of expression where ambassadors of death are sanctioned by the said court to promote apartheid. The judge said no. The people cried bravo. This was written by Charlie Roach in um, November 27, 1986. I'm going to just try and show you something here. Okay, here, here it is. Sorry, those are my comments. I'm sorry, it's not really showing here. Beautiful piece. Look at how he typed this on a piece of paper. That's the poetry of Charles Roach. I'm sitting in this hearing. I'm taking my notes. I'm going to share some of my notes with you. People, what exactly is an ethical mechanism of justice? We're talking about civil and democratic Canada. And you know what? This demographic, beginning with province number one, Oh, multicultural heartland of the world. What happened to Charles Roach? You know, I sat there. I looked, Mr. Punjabi looking at me. I looked at Mr. fucking Punjabi. I said to myself, you know what? That motherfucker's looking at me and he's not even reading the piece of paper. That's a fucking technical. Duh. And I looked at this other bitch, right? I said, look at her. Is she even listening to what the fucking guy is saying? He is talking, and it wasn't until he said, I need some water. So if there's a justice in this fucking hearing, why couldn't the justice have some fucking humanity? I'd say, you know what, sir? We're going to take a break, okay? Is that okay with you? Yes, it is. I heard these objections by this council representing the Law Society of Upper Canada. Who the fuck is this bitch? You see this? Racial profiling? We will blow you out of the fucking universe, but you know how we do it? We do it with something called a pen. We impose trade sanctions. You know how we do that? Because we say, goodbye. We don't want your stuff. And what we do is we align with ethics. We align with people like this Harry Kipoto, uh, Kipo Kopito, sorry. We align with people like that. I don't even know who this person is. Someone says, hey, come to this hearing. I'm like, okay. He 
calls everybody together. He says, what do you think? What are your thoughts? I'm like, this is fucking great. Johnny Cochran's strategy. Even better. You see, Cochran was good. But I don't know if Cochran actually collaborated with people from the public the way that this Copot uh, Copito did. Johnny Cochran is good. Don't get me wrong. But this Copito? What do you guys think? Right there, in the Law Society of Upper Canada. I just thought, this man is great. So I said to him, I said, what, wh what's their problem with you? Oh, well, you know, they're assessing my character. So what about them? How have they, co how have they um, confirmed their character? Bitch, she's looking around. She ain't taking no notes. Another one, so insensitive. Punjabi guy looking at me. I'm look looking right at him. You're supposed to be looking at your fucking piece of paper guy and you're supposed to be reading. This is a hearing for a person who represents people that can't even afford justice. Why do we even have to pay for justice? When it's in the fucking constitution, it's part of our citizenship right. I don't know who this Charles Roach is, but I tell you, there's just something powerful about this person. I couldn't even believe how they treated him. Copito is trying to resurrect his spirit in the fucking hearing. How is Copito supposed to just stay <gasps> and not think anything? This guy taught Copito what he knows. Who is Harry Copito? That's the title of this video. In respect to Charles Roach. Who is this Harry Copito? I'd like to hear your thoughts about mechanisms of justice. Thanks for watching.